not something I need to play through over and over again, but I mean, if they released an HD version in a couple years, I'd sure as hell pick it up. Skyward Sword HD is a re... something. I forget how it works. It's like Ground Up is a remake and an HD texture pack is a remaster? Or maybe I have that backwards? To those who don't know, Skyward Sword originally released for the Wii back in 2011, and again on the Wii U in 2016 as an eShop title. It went from $50 down to $20, and now after five more years, it's back up to $60. It is the earliest part in the Zelda timeline, showcasing the creation of some key elements such as the Master Sword, Hyrule itself, and the Gerudos. The entire game was designed around the Wii Motion Plus to showcase its capabilities, allowing for more interactive gameplay. It was the first Zelda title to have a fully orchestrated soundtrack and a much heavier focus on animated cutscenes. It also had the longest development period of any Zelda game at the time. I remember the first thing I had seen of it was the concept art with Fi and what appeared to be an older Link. Supposedly, the game was originally going to be similar to Twilight Princess in terms of art styles, but they elected to change it since the game revolved around seeing enemies' weapons and stances, and that was kind of harder to tell with a more detailed and darker art style. I've actually covered Skyward Sword before with the Zelda Salt series, so any longtime fans know that I actually love this game. I even said how I'd love to buy a copy of an HD release if it ever happened, just to see those visuals in high quality. I still enjoy the sword fighting, how every monster is almost a puzzle in a way. Peppermint Kisses still remains one of my top Zelda villains, second only to Yuga. Yes, I have a type. The dungeons felt a little more unique in this title, and I was also a fan of the approach to the overworld and how every section was sort of a dungeon in and of itself. I will never not gush about how much I love the Time Crystal section, and despite kind of lacking in numbers, I found the bosses interesting as well. Most of them, that is. I was a fan of it back in the golden days where everyone like me couldn't as easily voice their opinions online, and I could more easily stay inside my hug box. It was actually a few years before I realized how many people disliked it, though whenever I heard about their gripes, it was generally the same things. The imprison was annoying, Phi was annoying, beginning is annoying, lots of padding, and of course, the motion controls. I was in the camp of I didn't have any issues until I tried speedrunning the game and then of course they'd constantly screw up. But luckily, there is the option to play with a controller and bypass them completely now. Fi no longer pesters you non-stop, the beginning is streamlined, and the imprison is still, well, he's still annoying. So on paper, it seems like this should be a good title, and it is, but... <sighs> Well, I'm a Nintendo fanboy, right? I'm sure plenty of people know that about me and hate it, possibly, I don't know. But it's hard for even me to get behind the decision to release this game at full price. Wind Waker and Twilight Princess HD had a $10 price cut, and even those could be argued to be a little greedy. There have been other HD remasters with higher quality content and collections, and even remakes with multiple games for a lower cost. On top of that, a quality of life change is locked behind an amiibo. Sure, this isn't new, Twilight Princess had a full gauntlet locked behind an amiibo, but I'm more upset that a quality of life feature is locked away than a gauntlet. Neither is great, and honestly, neither of them are that terrible. But you also have to factor in how scalpers run rampant with any new release nowadays, and it's getting harder and harder to acquire first-party consoles or accessories at launch. Completely unrelated, but huh, look at that! You can get NFC tags online for like 10 bucks. I have no idea why that came to mind though. Yeah, anyway, sure, it's just $10 and 15 for the amiibo. Oh wait, sorry. 25 for the amiibo because it's a special one. But it's definitely a slippery slope. I mean, even just the amiibo. We used to get Nintendo online for free and sure it wasn't great, but now we pay for it and it, it might be worse. I still can't really tell. It's hard to shake off this feeling that Nintendo, this bubbly company that inspired me to create and tell stories, might be turning into the bad guy, if they haven't already. That gaming has become so mainstream now that select series can phone it in since a name tagged onto it is enough to push sales. That the company is no longer comprised of gamers and instead of money makers. At least on Nintendo's ends, things definitely took a turn after what is passing for me and, well, we all joked about having a guy named Bowser become president and, well... I'm really torn with this title because I do love Skyward Sword, and I'm excited that I can play it in HD, and I'm excited that people could play a version that removes some of the issues others have had. I still think that it has some of the best dungeons, engaging fights with regular mobs, and a fantastic design. Plus, it has Kalakdos, the best boss in the Zelda series! Man, I get a lot of people trying to fight me or badmouth me because I state my opinion and then they realize I am not a carbon copy of them. But when it comes to Kalakdos, please fight me. 
Please, I know I am 100% in the right here, and anyone that suggests otherwise is wrong. Regardless, this title still has a large place in my heart. The memories of a wide-eyed younger me donning his Link tunic shirt and attempting to tape his Wiimote to his Master Sword replica only to realize that thing was heavy. The fun I had playing through it with someone close to me, and the stories it inspired me to tell. So in a way, it's a double-edged sword. I got the remake I wanted, but it's been thrusted into this position to highlight the probable decline in a company I love. I'm excited that some will play it for the first time and possibly have an experience similar to mine, but nostalgia can only take me so far, and as the years go on, I can feel its grip fading and influencing my purchases less. I've come to realize that companies are not my friends. Companies want my money, and that's pretty much it. It's weird to see these re-releases and remakes that don't add much. It always seems like it'd be the perfect time to add in cut dungeons or something, or features that weren't possible on previous gen's hardware that they had planned. Still, most are made to sell the game to a new generation or buy time in between major releases. I'm guessing since Breath of the Wild 2 is most likely related to Skyward Sword in a way, seeing as how a lot takes place in the sky, this was also made as a refresher for both the story and where some mechanics originated. Who knows? I could very easily be in the wrong mindset, and maybe it is worth $60 and an amiibo tax. I have no idea, since I haven't personally played it, this has all just been footage of an HD texture pack on an emulator with codes to mimic the quality of life changes announced so far, and played with my original Skyward Sword Edition Wii Motion Plus that after 10 years, still doesn't drift.